Okay, so some of this stuff is analytical scribbling on the board, and other, the other stuff is using MATLAB. So it's a combination of the two, the two things. So now you have another problem here. How many more problems? Get worn out here. Uh, oh, three. This is the last one. Is that right? No. Yes. Solve a difference equation for y sub n. So now 5.3 is uh, basically solve y sub n is equal to 0 0.5 y sub n minus 1 plus 0 0.25 y n minus 2 plus x of n. Uh -huh. okay, you use a one-sided z-transform approach. Uh, and n is greater than or equal to zero. So it's, uh, and y of minus one is one. And y of minus two is, is two. Uh, and x, the input x of n is this function here which is 0 0.8 to the n. It's an exponential function. U to the n because everything starts out at n greater than or equal to 0 anyway. Uh, uh, so you take the transform of both sides. Uh, no, you take the transform of the equation, the z-transform of the equation, uh, the one-sided z-transform remembering that, and you take the one side of z-transform, when you transform these uh, values that have a delay in them, they follow a particular format that introduces the initial conditions uh, that you have. So uh, when you take y plus of z, which means the one side of z-transform because everything's starting at zero, uh, you get the expression <coughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, zero point five y plus of z. Uh -huh. Oh, you got this minus one. So you got z minus one y of z. Uh -huh. Plus you have the initial condition. That initial condition. Oh, maybe I'll put it like that. All right. So when you take the z transform of that, you get this term. For with the y sub z, y plus z to one side plus, you get this initial condition tossed in there. Uh -huh. uh, and we looked at how that was done. We derived that by fiddling with the equations. But after you do that, you just you just do it by inspection here. Uh, uh, you get z minus two y to the z uh, plus uh, uh, y minus two plus uh, z z minus 2 times y z divided by 2 plus z minus 1 uh, y of 1. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you take the z transform, one side of z transform, something like that, you get this. Mm -hmm. You get z to the minus 2 uh, times that. Uh, And you get, I don't know if I that way, that's an odd way to write it. Mm -hmm. That's an odd way to write that. You, you think you'd write it, you got z minus 2 over here, okay? Mm -hmm. no, okay? And then you get z minus 1 times y of 1, a y of minus 1, and then you get y of minus 2. Okay, that makes more sense because the powers of z 
increase until you get to zero. <coughs> the powers of z increase until you get to zero in that case, and starting at, starting at z to the minus one. So uh, you can figure out the pattern that occurs and, and uh, use the pattern. You don't have to go back to first principles and derive everything all the time. Plus the run side at z transform of x. Mm -hmm. And there aren't any delays associated with x, so it would that. So now then, you've got to gather up all the y pluses and put them on one side, and you've got to put everything else on the other side. So that's algebra. Uh, and after you do your algebra, uh, you end up with something like this, and you get this 1 minus 0 0.5 z to the minus 1 minus 0, 2, 5, z to the minus 2, uh, equaling 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.25, z to the minus 1, uh, plus 1 over 0 0.8, z to the minus 1, which is the, which is the z transform of that thing. Uh, where did it go? Uh, this thing. <laughs> the z transform of that is this. Uh, so you gathered up, and then and, and, and there's a, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now you got all the y's and the z plus z's on one side, you got other stuff on the other, and so now you can solve for y sub z, and if you do that, uh, There are a couple of different expressions you can get. Uh, uh, but we'll just write down the last one. So y plus z, all okay. right? Mm -hmm. And you figure out what it is. So you 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 divide this, you divide that this side by this stuff over here and you simplify the, the whole thing and get a simple fraction, and you get this fraction when you're done, which you can use MATLAB to figure this out too, 0.55z to the minus one, minus 0.2z to the minus two, divided by uh, one minus 0.8z to the minus one is one factor. Mm -hmm. Let me multiply the denominator out all together. Uh, 1 minus 1.3 z to the minus 1 uh, plus 0 0.15 z to the minus 2. Uh, ha, 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 plus 0 0.20 z to the minus 3. Uh, z to the minus 3, all right? All right, so you get this fraction. Mm -hmm. So when you, uh, you take this side and divide it by this fraction here and combine like terms and cross multiply and add them together, you end up with this fraction. Whoopie doop, right? Uh, and you can utilize MATLAB to help you do the multiplication uh, using the convolve function because that multiplies polynomials. Uh, and you can get the, uh, this result. Otherwise, you could do that by hand. Good luck. Uh, uh, you can be tedious to take you half an hour. You have to be very careful and do your multiplications right. And you got these negative powers of z and all that stuff drives you crazy. But if you do it, uh, if you do it by hand, you'll end up with that. If you do it and have MATLAB help you out, you'll do it by you'll end up with the same answer. You're not going to get different answers. You're going to get the same darn answer. And then you want a partial fraction expansion. You want a partial fraction expansion of that. So if you know the numerator polynomial and you know the denominator polynomial, you know the numerator vector and you know the denominator vector, you can use the residue. Uh, uh, residue Z and, and include the B and A and it'll calculate the residues for you plus the poles and uh, if you uh, avail yourself of that uh,
residue. I think in MATLAB, in MATLAB, if you do residue Z and you use the B and you use A and you set this thing equal to the vector R, P, and C, that function will take this polynomial, polynomial and figure out the residues. It'll figure out the poles. Uh -huh. It'll figure out the poles, and it'll figure out any constant that's left over, if there is any. Well, in this case, you don't have any. It factors into neatly into polynomials. Uh, admittedly, with funky uh, 65.870, all over 1 minus 0 0.809 z to the minus 1 plus minus 64 over 1 minus 0 0.8 z to the minus 1 uh, plus uh, 0 0.1298 uh -huh. and that's divided by 1 plus 0 0.3090 z to the minus 1. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when you partial fraction expansion by finding the residues in the poles, you get that expression. Uh, uh, for what you got. And then you can do y sub n then is just inverse transforming each of these terms uh, by looking up at the table on page 87. And this is the constant 65.870 times 0 0.809 to the n. This goes into minus 64. Well, now uh, you can either keep minus 64 in the constant or do it down there. Uh, 0 0.8 to the n, and then this is plus 0 0.1298, uh, 0.309 to the n, and this all this stuff here is multiplied by u to the n. <laughs> u to the n. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you get that crazy thing, okay? <clears throat> but this crazy output then is gotten from the original equation and doing this this operation here, taking the transforms and seeing how the transforms of things with a delay in it are formed. You have to remember the pattern of how that's done. Uh, <clears throat> And then you solve for y sub z, and, and you use MATLAB if it's a crazy fraction to, to, to be able to combine these things. Uh, MATLAB is very useful. Uh, and then you end up with the fraction of which you use MATLAB again and figure out what the residues are. And once you get the residues, you can easily use that information to, to write out the expression for the uh, time domain and just invert those. Okay. So uh, that's that's part. Uh, and you want to generate 20 samples of y sub n using MATLAB and compare them to your answer. So this is the answer you got analytically by doing this and doing algebra and multiplying those things and doing partial fraction expansion. You get that thing. So uh, you want to generate uh, uh, want to generate the uh, information, you want to generate 20 of them. Where is that? Next page. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where is the... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you, you get that crazy stuff, okay? So. Uh, <coughs> And so you want to generate uh, 20 samples of this thing here. So you're, you can write that equation down and let n go from 0 to 20 steps of 1, and it'll generate the vector y sub n based on this expression. Right? So that generates the, the, the 20 samples from that, from that analytical way. So now if you want to do it with uh, MATLAB, uh, you, have the, you have from this uh, uh, the difference equation up there, 
if you go from the difference equation, you have a denominator uh, vector here equal to 1, and you have a equal to uh, 1 minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.25. Uh -huh. Okay, that's the, the vectors that come from the difference, difference equation that, that you see up there. So that's the coefficients of x, and this is the coefficients of y, uh, written in descending order there. So it's y sub n, then y sub n minus 1, then y sub n minus 2. That's the coefficients, how they appear. Uh, you also have some initial conditions. These are the initial conditions. Okay, those are the initial conditions. So, uh, you know, I didn't. I should. Oh, right, now, from this information, okay, we're over here. We're over here doing this thing. Okay, so you need that. You need those vectors. And then you have an initial condition vector, which is one and two, which is these two things right here, one and two. Mm -hmm. So from this initial condition vector and the polynomial vectors there, of B and A, of the different difference equation, you can uh, uh, find out what XIC is. Uh, that's the initial conditions you get by, I don't know, this is what the book, that's the book's terminology. Uh, he calls it XIC. And it's uh, the, what is it? Uh, F I L T I filter initial conditions. Okay. Of uh, mm -hmm, of B A and Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the book, in the book, he uses capital Y for the initial conditions of Y and capital X for the initial conditions of X. Well, there are no initial conditions on X, so it's zero. So it doesn't show up here. All you have is initial conditions of Y, and so they appear in the, in the uh, uh, function here. Mm -hmm. And if you had initial conditions on X, then, then they would go here, okay? Since you don't, you leave that off, and MATLAB is smart enough to figure out if you only give it three parameters, it's B, A, and Y. If you give it four parameters, then it's B, A, Y, and X. So MATLAB knows, knows that uh, knows that happens. So, uh, so that gives you that, okay? So uh, you have N is equal to zero to 20 because that's what you want for the, that axis. Your initial uh, thing is 0 0.8 uh, to the n, well, it's not that, to this to the n. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's 0 point raised to the n power raised to this power, so you get a, x is a vector of all those samples of, for the input. So now you have the input samples, uh, uh, what do we want to generate here? We want to generate, uh, you want to use B, A, the input samples, and the, uh, the input conditions, the initial conditions. Okay, so now, well, I guess you could call that, uh, I guess instead of calling, since this is, uh, well, it doesn't make any difference. He calls it XIC. I guess you could call it YIC because that's Y over there, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, so now then you can generate uh, 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 where did, oh I didn't do that yet. You got to generate the uh, uh, I see I did that already. B A and Y I did that okay. And now you generate the output Y, which is nothing more than the filter of B A X and X, I, C. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I guess if it, it would make more sense if, it, if you call this Y, I, C, because it has to do with Y, and this would be Y, I, C. Doesn't make any difference, it's just the name anyway, so. So now this filter that you have has B, A, and